Hello, welcome to this demonstration of Winchell's change management process. My name's James Brooks, I work at Root Solutions and I'll be taking you through this presentation today. The change management process inside Winchill allows companies to standardise change across the entire enterprise. Due to its automated nature, it significantly reduces rework and the burden of change coordination across your entire organisation. You can standardise on best practices for processing simple and complex changes, allowing Windchill to propagate that change to the right people at the right time with all of the information and documentation that they need to perform their task efficiently. Change management inside Windchill is a closed loop CM2 compliant process which can be broken down into five main steps. Identify need, investigate the need, plan the change, implement the change and then the physical implementation. For this demonstration I'll be using a process as a guideline. However, this process is not set in stone and is easy to configure for your individual business requirements. It's also important to outline the three main objects used by Windchill's change management system and these are the problem report or PR which allows you to record a description of the problem, the area affected and the steps to reproduce the issue. A change request or CR which is a more formal request to implement the change that contains a suggested solution, a complete list of all the affected documents, an assessment of the solution, and then the business rationale. Many PRs can be addressed by one single change request or CR. Then we have the change notice or CN. This is a holistic plan to implement the change that contains the full list of change tasks with an assigned author and reviewer for those tasks together with target dates for release and effectivity. Many change requests can be addressed by a single change notice. Let's take the five step process and turn it into a storyboard to follow during this presentation. Each step providing a short demonstration and a more detailed description of what's occurring at that stage. In this example, we'll be defining a problem report for the pneumatic cylinder in an assembly which has been found to be too weak to perform to specifications. We'll then analyze and plan and implement the change finally review that change and release it to the system. So, step one, identify the need. We'll mark up the problems, create a problem report and attach relevant data. In this first step we take the role of Kenny, who has discovered the pneumatic cylinder in the jack assembly is not strong enough to perform to specifications. Using Windchill's powerful search tools we can find the assembly in question and then use the embedded visualization to verify we have the right item. And the integrated where used field comes in handy when sourcing its owning assembly. We can then begin to mark up the issues directly on the visualization without the need for a CAD tool. We can measure, red line, make notes, we can even explode the assembly. The visualization is 100% accurate to the CAD data and can be used through a simple web browser. These annotations are stored against the object itself and can then be used in the problem report. Anybody inside your organization who has visibility of this product has the capability to create these annotations and store them against the product. If we take a look at the product page for the Jack assembly, we can see the newly created annotations stored in the content tab. We can simply copy this with a view to pasting it directly into the problem report later on. Let's create that problem report now. A simple step-by-step -step wizard opens up to guide us through this process and we can define the problem report name, who's requesting it, the priority, category and a need by date along with a more detailed description of the problem. In the second step we collect the affected item and also paste that associated annotation or the markup directly into the problem report. The third step is that we can add any supporting documentation or attachments that would help us describe this issue. We can then submit the problem report. A quick look at the Assembly's Change Report tab, we can see the problem report is listed along with any other change objects that have been created against this particular product. So with the need identified, let's go back to that storyboard. By raising a problem report against the product, we can benefit from the integrated visualization and capture annotations directly on our product data. This standardized process means that all of your product defects and enhancements are recorded and easily traced. Let's have a look at step two, investigate the need to change. 
We'll review the product report, we'll evaluate it, and then we'll create a change request if it's required. In step two, we take the role of Charlie, who's the person designated to review problem reports, and in particular problems with this product. Looking at his personal assignments, we can see that Windchill has automatically tasked him to analyze this problem report. When the task is opened, we can see the PR, plus some detailed instructions on how to perform this task. By selecting the problem report, we can see the problem, who raised it, and all of the relevant markups and supporting documentation for this problem. The review of the problem report can be done completely through Windchill without the need to access CAD packages or any authoring applications and provides a single comprehensive means of reviewing all relevant information to base a decision on. That includes the associated visualization that was created earlier by Kenny. This means that I can review the problem report fully. I can have a look with clear detail on the actual models themselves as to what the problem is and the areas that are of concern. With the review complete, I can then go ahead and actually complete this task, entering in comments uh, in the field shown that, yes, I accept there's a problem. Um, the other thing that I can do is check the object to see if there have been any other problem reports raised against it. So before I go ahead and create a change request, I might want to include those other problems in that single change and, and close them all off in one go rather than doing a separate one, a separate change for every problem report that's raised. So it's very easy to find. We can go up to the change tab at the top here, have a look at all of the different PRs that have been raised. And in fact, I can see that there has been another one there. So very simply, I can select that object and just copy it to my clipboard with a view to pasting it downstream. Creating the change request can be as simple as a right-hand mouse button on the corresponding problem report that you'd like to raise the change request against. Filling in the details of this change request is easy as we can select the option to propagate the information from an existing problem report and feed that directly into our change request and then providing some additional information for things like the proposed solution or a, a more accurate need by date. Again, following this step-by-step -step process, we can move easily through the process of creating this uh, change request and at this stage, obviously, paste in any other problem reports that we think might be corrected by this change. Once the change request has been created, we move on to the next step in our change process. So let's review some of the benefits of this step. We can reduce the time it takes to locate all of the information relating to the issues or the problems that we have, um, even capture and record some of the investigation findings, either in a response or adding more annotations to the visualization file. And we can coordinate this process very easily through Windchill. Let's take a look at step three, change planning, where we're going to review the change request, create a change notice, and develop an implementation plan. In step three, we're going to adopt the role of Pat, who's a high-level manager who has the authority to create a formal change notice. Once again, Windchill has automatically routed the change and its tasks to the right person. And in this case, it's asking me to review the change request that was created by Charlie in step two. Once again, Windchill gives me a single location to review all of the relevant information on which I'm going to base my decision on. And in this instance, reviewing the design assembly and its product structure to determine which assemblies are going to be affected. Once again, using Winchell's powerful visualization capabilities to accurately pick up exactly the parts that need to be modified and the parts that are in question in this case. I can then proceed with the raising of the change notice, commenting that Dave, the design engineer, needs to replace the cylinder. I can determine how this change is routed in either a fast track or a full track change, which have different routings inside our organization. With the review of the change request complete, I can now move on to actually create the change notice. Windchill again automatically issues these tasks to create the change notice and again gives full details on how to proceed. Windchill then asks us to submit the change notice. Now obviously before we submit anything, we need to develop an implementation plan. So very easily we can go into the change notice itself and start to develop that. This implementation plan allows us to define work tasks and assign them to owners and then also designate reviewers for those tasks.
These tasks can also be nested so that one can't begin without the first one being completed. Dates and descriptions can also be defined. One of the most crucial aspects of defining these tasks in Windchill is that you can quickly collect all of the affected objects, for instance, all associated drawings to their assemblies and all corresponding parts and their corresponding drawings and so on. So this smart collection tool is extremely powerful. The person performing the task doesn't then need to go and track down the data that they need to perform their task. It's handed to them on a plate. As we can't modify release data, we can generate new revisions of these objects that can then be worked on, allowing the business to continue to work with the release data until the change has been completed on these new revised objects. Until that's happened, the rest of the business will be alerted to the fact that the currently released data is under change with a very large red warning triangle, which appears next to the part name. This level of visibility means that everybody inside the organization who's attempting to use this product as part of their design is clearly aware that it's currently under change. Once all the tasks have been laid out, we can then submit the change notice whereby those tasks will be issued to the individuals that we've designated to perform them. Let's review step three. So a simple and intuitive wizard style interface allows us to create the change notice. We can then develop an implementation plan, assign owners and reviewers, and collect all relevant data to those tasks, and then coordinate that change to all relevant people who may need to be involved in this particular stage of the process. Moving on to step four, we go ahead and perform the change task. Logging into Windchill as Dave, the design engineer, we can see that a task has been delivered to us in our assignments field inside Windchill, and it's asking us to change the cylinder. The task tells us exactly what we need to do, and even provides us with all the data we need to actually work on. A simple right-hand mouse button click, and we can begin to get to work on that data. As instructed, we can replace the cylinder and update the drawing and then check in our new version. So let's just take a couple of seconds here to uh, allow Dave, the design engineer, to check out both the part, the assembly and the drawing, make the changes as desired and uh, just replace those over. Once that's complete, we'll check that back into Windchill and complete our task. This is a great example of how Windchill integrates with the authoring CAD tool, regardless of whether it's Creo or, or any other CAD package. You can interact with Windchill directly from the CAD tool, either by the embedded browser or by the workgroup manager, allowing you to interact with the tasks that you've been asked to perform, entering comments here, and then finally complete these tasks. Windchill will then automatically move on to the next step in the change process, which is to notify Pat that Dave has completed his work and updated the design, which now needs to be reviewed. So again, Windchill has collected all the relevant information, allowing Pat to perform this review without the need to open up a CAD package, simply using the visualization. Following his review, Pat can mark the task as complete and move the change on to the next step. The next step may be more tasks that need to be performed as part of this change process. Now obviously we've only done one here. So when all of the tasks have been performed, a final audit of the entire change can be performed. Windchill has recorded each step of the process right from the original problem report, the following change request, right through to the implementation plan, together with all the original and modified data. This can all be reviewed and audited, and once this audit has been completed, the change can then be closed. When the change is closed, the new revisions of the data become released information, replacing the older versions. And all of the participants that have been involved in this change process will receive an email notifying them that the change has been completed. Changes in Windchill can be monitored in our dedicated change monitor area, which tracks the status and health of all of the changes currently occurring inside your system or your business. And it can provide you with various reports based on what you want to see. 
So just to summarize step four, the automatic distribution of these implementation tasks to users is extremely powerful and it means that we remove bottlenecks uh, created by kind of manual propagation of those tasks and when they happen. We can also improve the efficiency of manufacturing planning. Although my changes occurred immediately, you can set effectivity on the date at which the newly changed products overwrite the old released items. And obviously the standard things apply here where we've got coordinated change implementation, uh, we've organized it correctly, and the right things are going to the right people at the right time. Let's move on to step five. The fifth step in the process can't really be demonstrated, but refers to how changes may be implemented in the physical environment. After a change has been released from engineering, the change must also then be incorporated into downstream systems. So these could be things such as ERP, a supplier, or changes being up updated in manufacturing and production. And actually some of these manufacturing related changes could have been done in the previous step, step four. However, Windchill provides the infrastructure to communicate and manage the physical change implementation, whether ERP records must be updated or accessed, or if suppliers have to have access to the, the new released information, Windchill can support all of these processes. That concludes the five step process, so let's just take a summary of what Windchill change management provides. It provides improved productivity. It's a single standardized enterprise change process. It automates the change process and minimizes rework and change coordination. It improves product quality by standardizing on the best practices for processing simple and complex changes, giving early visibility to all of this throughout the entire enterprise. You can reduce time to market by reducing product development cycle time, giving accurate documentation of all the changes that are occurring inside the business. You can reduce the time spent on change-related administrative work and automatically deliver the downstream objects that are required by your business. Thank you for watching this presentation today. For more information, contact Root Solutions. Thank you for watching.